Okay, everybody, before we start this video, I just wanted to share with you all Prince and Polo. They went to the groomers today and they got their hair cut and they are simply gorgeous. We have Polo right there on the left and Princey right here that's laying down. He's really tired. Say hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Everybody, I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited today because today at the Young's house, Gina Young is going to share with you all how easy it is to make spinach casserole. This recipe right here, it's amazing. It's so easy to make. It doesn't require a lot of ingredients and you know, you make a Gina Young style, it's going to be so tasty. Y'all never had my spinach casserole before. You better make you some. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You will need five large eggs. So that's what we have here. You're gonna need some Philadelphia cream cheese. Right here we have some Parmesan cheese. And if you have the Parmesan cheese that's in a green shaker, that's fine also. Right here I have some fresh sliced mozzarella. You will need some pie crust. This is the kind of pie crust that I love to use. It's amazing. You also will need chopped spinach. So right here we have some frozen bags of chopped spinach. You're gonna need a can of greens, some rice, and also you're gonna need a couple of spices so we can spice everything up. Here's what you'll need over this way. You will need some garlic powder, some black pepper and salt. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple yet so tasty recipe. Okay, everyone, we are here at the back door. I don't know if you all can see, but we have somewhat of a snowstorm. It's beautiful outside. Gorgeous. Lots of snow here in Ohio. Let me know what the weather's like where you all are at. I couldn't be more excited for this here recipe. Like I said earlier, it's so easy to make and when your loved ones taste this, they're gonna go nuts over it. You wanna put this on your holiday table. You know, whether it's Christmas, New Year's, make it for birthdays, it's just simply delicious all year round. Okay, so I'm putting some gloves on because what I wanna do is I wanna squeeze out any extra liquid that may be in the spinach. And you know with the spinach being frozen previously, there's gonna be some water in it. Now, if you have a cheesecloth, you can put the spinach and your canned greens in a cheesecloth and then just wring it out until all of the liquid is gone. But I don't have cheesecloth, so we'll do it this way, use a strainer. And you can already see in the bowl here how much liquid we've extracted just by letting it sit so now this can that i'm going to use here is a 27 ounce can of greens use whatever kind of greens that you can find okay so i have already poured out the liquid but i'm pretty sure there's going to be a little bit of liquid in those greens so here's what we're going to do i'm going to take my handy dandy gloves and i just come look come look can you see that liquid? And you may even see, you can see that. You see all that liquid? We wanna extract as much liquid out of the spinach and the greens, just like so. Pretty simple, right? You all can do this. Once I get this done, I'll come back and I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, everyone, so here's all of the unwanted liquid that you don't want. Now, you can use that liquid to feed your plants if you have house plants. Use that liquid to feed your plants. They're gonna sprout up like a beautiful flower. Okay, so we're gonna just set this aside. And next what we're gonna do is we wanna crack some eggs, okay? So we're gonna crack these five large eggs into this bowl, just like so. I hope you all are having an amazing day today. You can see Prince and Polo are very tired. They had a rough day at the you know, at the groomers. They look so cute though. All right, so now we're getting our eggs cracked, just like so. And when it comes to the Parmesan cheese, I like to mix in the Parmesan cheese with the eggs when I scramble it. Why? It's just, for some reason, I just like to. 
Okay, so let me tell you exactly how much this is. This is five ounces and I wanna use all the five ounces, okay? So let's get this nice and mixed up, just like so until those eggs are well combined with the Parmesan cheese. All right, I'm gonna continue when I come back. I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, everyone, so I want you to take a look at the consistency of the Parmesan cheese in the five beaten eggs that we've beat it together. That's what it should look like. Okay, so now what I wanna do, my cream cheese is room temperature. Make sure your cream cheese is room temperature. And literally all we did was we just sat it outside on the counter, you know, just for about maybe an hour or two, okay? And we want to somewhat dice it up. You know, it is a mushy cheese, so do what you can. It doesn't have to be perfect dices, but try your best. Okay, so we're gonna do this. My purpose for using this paper plate is because it is sticky and I don't wanna put it on my cutting board to have it stick everywhere. So you see what we're getting? That's what we want. And honestly, you don't have to use a knife. You can just pull it apart if you wanted to. Okay, just get it in some type of chunks. Okay, when I come back, I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, everyone, so here's what I wanna do. We have taken our spinach and our greens that have been drained, we put them in a nice clear bowl, okay? So now, go ahead and take your cream cheese and let's put it on top of those greens and your um, spinach, okay? And kind of spread it apart a little bit if you would. You don't want it all to go back into a clump. All right, so what we'll do is we'll start off by putting just a little bit in at a time and then once we mix it, we'll put a little bit more in. So you can see how much we've put in here. All right, next I wanna take and open up my fresh mozzarella. And you normally can find this mozzarella in your deli section. Okay, let's put this on top of a plate as well. In your local deli section on the cheese wall, okay? It will have somewhat of this liquid here. Don't freak out about it, it's okay. It's supposed to have that, all right? Now what you wanna do, you either tear it apart just like so, get it in there, or chop it up like I'm gonna do. Either way, it's just fine, okay? Let's take this time to chop it up. We'll stack it. This recipe is amazing. It's so tasty, the kids love it. And you know, if I can sit here and say kids love this recipe, oh listen, you know it's gonna be good. All right, so now put those slices and we're gonna use the whole thing. When it comes to mozzarella, you can never have too much of mozzarella, especially when it's nice and fresh. So we're gonna chop this down just like so. Chop the rest of this down. And then the next things we'll be adding is our Parmesan cheese and our eggs, and also the shredded, uh, shredded uh, Monterey Jack. Get it together, Gina. Okay, everyone, so next what we wanna do, let's go ahead, you can use your hands or use whatever utensil you wanna use. Sometimes it can get a little heavy because we have a lot of ingredients here. So now, we have our cheese here. Let's go ahead and put the Parmesan and the eggs in, just like so. And listen here, when you're using the three bags of spinach and the one can of the greens, you wanna make sure you use five eggs, it's very important. Now I wanna take this time to season, listen here. I know you're out there. You're out there and you're afraid to season. If you're that person, your food will be flavorless. Don't do it. Make sure you season so your food can have Lots of flavor and taste delicious. Now that was pepper and garlic. I'm gonna be a little gentle with the salt because your loved ones can put their own salt on. That's enough salt. Put your oven on 375 degrees. We're gonna mix this around a little bit with our soft spatula, just like so. Get all this lovely goodness well combined. And then we'll come in and put that extra cream cheese that we left aside in on the top, okay? Like I said, because sometimes cream cheese can tend to stick to itself. We didn't want it all to clump together, okay? So we're gonna get this nice and mixed up just like so. 
Okay, everyone, so now let's go ahead and take this time to put in our cream cheese. And I tell you one thing, this is not done, but it smells amazing. Oh, <laughs> listen here, my mouth is watering, so I know you guys' mouth has to be watering. Let me know in the comment section below if you've ever tried this before and if your stomach is rumbling and if your mouth is watering right now. Okay, so now we have that in. Let's go ahead and give it a nice mix. And I did put a little bit more salt in and a little tiny bit more garlic powder. Now that everything is well combined, we're gonna put it into our baking dish. And you all that are familiar with me, you know that I absolutely love to use the aluminum baking pans. This is an 11 by nine. And I've taken a piece of paper towel with vegetable oil and I've put the oil at the bottom and all on the sides so our casserole does not stick. We don't want any issues when we go to take our casserole out. Okay, so now this bad boy is heavy. All right, let's put our lovely goodness right into this pan. And this pan is the perfect size for this specific uh, you know, casserole for the ingredients we're using. So now that we have all that lovely goodness out, let's go ahead and spread it out a little bit. Perfect. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our spatula, take your hand, whatever, the back of a spoon, and you wanna pat it down a little bit. The purpose for doing that is because we kinda want everything to kinda congeal together as if it was a lasagna. Okay, so we're gonna continue to do this just like so. Get it nice and level and flat. You don't want one side higher than the other. Make it nice and even. Okay, everyone, so now for the Monterey Jack. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's take Monterey Jack, we're gonna put some, we're gonna put a nice amount right on top, just like so. Oh, and listen here. This right here, it's delicious, just like this, and you bake it in the oven, but we're gonna go a step above that, okay? So now that we have that on top, what we need to do is we need to take these eggs that I have here, we need to scramble them, all right, or whisk them. <laughs> and I wanna put just a little tap of water in it so we'll have an egg wash because we're gonna need an egg wash to put on top of our pie crust. When I come back, we'll put our pie crust on. This is gonna go in the oven and We'll do that when I come back. <laughs> okay, everyone, now it's time to have some fun. So we have our dough that we've opened, and here's how it comes. It already comes rolled out. You don't have to add any flour, you know, no mixing. That's why I love these. And if yours isn't big enough, sometimes you can use two, or you can stretch it just big enough to where it'll fit, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Ooh, I couldn't be more excited. So now, we're just gonna kind of crimp it. It doesn't have to look perfect, because when it comes out of the oven, oh listen here, it's gonna look like magic. It's gonna be so beautiful. So here's what I like to do. All right, and now we take our second one. Just open it up just like so. I live for these pie crusts. They are amazing. These are the pie crusts that I use when I make my um, chicken pot pie. You all saw the video, and if you haven't seen that video, you better check it out because it's amazing. All right, so now just crimp the sides. Once again, preheat your oven, 375 degrees. This is going to cook for around about 35 to 40 minutes. All right, now how will I know when it's done, Gina? Well, you'll know because you know that perfect golden brown crispy consistency that pie crust has. Once your casserole has that beautiful color on top, you'll know it's done. Okay, so right here we have our egg wash that we put just probably a tablespoon of water with it, make it nice and thin and really whisk it up. Okay, so but what I wanna do is you wanna put some steam holes in here. Don't get crazy all over. Just make, you know, something look very nice in the middle. You know, maybe like this. Somewhat like that. Okay, if you wanted to do one here. 
in here. Make it look nice and presentable because that's what it's gonna look like when it comes out, okay? Beautiful, gorgeous, okay? So now, you wanna get a pastry brush and paint on this egg wash, just like so. All right, you wanna get those edges so they can be nice, beautiful, crispy, and golden brown and have that nice sheen to them. Sometimes a lot of people use, um, for their pie crust, some people will use heavy whipping cream, which is a great idea. It does the same thing. It gives you that glossy look as well. I'm gonna to continue to do this, and then in the oven we go. When this comes out of the oven, I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. You all are gonna get that first bite. And our casserole is done. 45 minutes in the oven, 375 until that crust is nice, beautiful, and golden brown. I'm gonna come around this way, take a look at it. Gina Young style spinach casserole, make you some. Okay, everyone, I know you all wanna talk about the rice and we should. Now, listen here. I made the rice, I made a cup and a half of white rice. If you're that person that wants to put the rice in your casserole, absolutely you can. The reason why I didn't do it today is because my husband's really not a fan of the rice. He would rather just have this casserole by itself. It's delicious by itself and it's delicious with the rice. If you're gonna put rice in yours, you wanna make sure you cook the rice ahead of time. And when we started to put the cheese mixed in with the spinach and the greens and everything, that's when you're gonna put your cooked rice in and mix it all up in and bake it that way. But what we're gonna do today, we have our rice right here on the side. And when we plate everything up, we're gonna set that spinach casserole right on top of that rice. It's amazing. Listen here, everybody. If you all enjoyed this here video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. When I come back, I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. You all are gonna get that first bite. Heavenly Father, we wanna thank you for this beautiful meal today. Lord, we thank you for your love time, your mercy and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night. Your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our minds in the name of Jesus. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. We bind the devil away from us in the name of Jesus. Let that devil know he has no authority over this household in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, peace and the joy that you bring us every day. Amen. I want you all to take a look at just how beautiful this spinach casserole is before we plate it up. I'll be right back. Look at that. Beautiful. Take a look. Gorgeous. I'm gonna let it set by itself so I can get a nice thumbnail. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night.